Hey, society usually tells us that everything that we need can be found outside ourselves if we just have the right friends, the right clothes, the right boyfriend or girlfriend, if we go to the right parties, or if we just buy the whole goddamn IKEA catalog, then we might just be happy. But more and more of us are realizing that this is not the case. The more and more we chase, the more we realize that the things we were chasing were never really the things that we were after. We still feel that lack and that emptiness when you get those things you were chasing. So before we begin our revolutions and we change the world, we need to fill that lack within ourselves. What if I told you that you already have everything you need to be happy and successful? Today I'd like to talk to you about your own unique power and how we can unleash our mad genius upon the world. I've been reading this book called The Seat of the Soul by Gary Sukov, and it centers around the idea of authentic power, power that comes from within you. We're used to thinking that things that give us power are things like money or status, fame, or one way or another having power over other people. But if you really think about it, those are false sources of power because they all go away. If you're used to manipulating people with your beauty or with your violent power, what happens when you get old and that beauty goes away? Or what happens when you get sick and you can no longer have physical strength? If you use your wealth to get your way, what happens when you go broke? When you believe that things outside yourself bring you power, you will always live in fear fear that it won't last, that somebody will take it from you, or fear that somebody else will have more power than you. Therefore, the things that give you true power are things that come from within yourself. Your talent, your intelligence, your heart, your soul, how you affect other people by communicating with them or interacting with them. Those are things that can never be truly taken from you, which sound like real power to me and under this proposition everything around you becomes irrelevant you can be homeless or in prison like Ed said and be a truly powerful being like we saw in somebody like Nelson Mandela who was in, in jail for like 27 years and he came out and he was still a powerful being and at the other end of the spectrum you can be somebody that has a lot of wealth but if you don't have a true power that comes from within, you could still feel powerless, even though you may have monetary abundance. So under this theory, you already have everything that you need to be happy and successful at your disposal. You don't even need to purchase anything. Personally, I find this idea to be liberating. If nothing outside myself will ever bring me true power or complete satisfaction, it's already within me what I need to achieve those things. Before you get there, actually, the biggest obstacle is realizing who actually are you. Because everybody around you will want to tell you who you are. I mean, even society will give us like a formula to achieve success, which is like university, marriage, children, house, career, and then once you achieve those, you're supposed to be happy, right? But to go with this idea is to assume that every human being feels the same way and experiences life the same way and expects the things, the same things. And that would be to think that all humans are the same and that we're like some kind of a robot race, which is not true. We all have a different experience of our lives and we all have different desires and beliefs. And the beautiful thing about our generation, I think, is that actually more and more of us are refusing to swallow this bullshit. <laughs> more and more of us are questioning the desires and the beliefs that exist in our society. And if you haven't, I would encourage you to begin this questioning. Do you want a house, a car, a husband or a wife because that's what you actually want? Or because you've been told that that's what normal people do? Or that's what success looks like? If you're with somebody with curly hair, do you strain your hair all the time because you actually like straight hair or because you've been told your whole life that you should have straight hair and that pretty people always happen to have straight hair? Do you really want to spend all your free time shopping at the mall or do you rather be with nature? Do you rather be helping preserve the earth? 
I mean, we could go on and on with these kinds of questions and I would encourage you to do so in your own time. The most revealing question I arrived in my personal discovery was why does everything that society is expect me to do and be have a lot to do with money? Like even the most sacred ideals in our society like motherhood or parenthood and marriage, they involve making a lot of other people a lot of money and a lot of them also in include keeping us in debt. The answer to this question is obvious, but what I'm really trying to get at is what do you actually want to experience because no one else in this world except yourself is going to make sure that you get there like even our families who are people that tend to have our best interests at heart even our family can sometimes want different things for ourselves than what we truly want in our heart so to truly act in ways that favor you and that support what you really want to do in life you have to strip away every idea and every belief that's been placed upon yourself by people outside you like even if you arrived at the same ideas even if you still wanted to get married and have children wouldn't it be more empowering to know that you still wanted those things because it came from somewhere deep within you than to just mindlessly follow those instructions because that's all you've heard you should do in your life to me the real question becomes are you living the life you want to live or are you just making other people money without you even realizing that you're not living the life you want to be living As I began to examine every small and big belief that I hold, I began to truly figure out who I really am. And this examining has really taken me back to my childhood. Maybe I've just read The Catcher in the Rye way too many times, but I kind of feel like when we were children, we were already the, our most authentic selves because we didn't have concepts of what we should do or how other people thought of us we mostly just acted from our heart and we did whatever felt good in that moment and you came back to the things that felt good to you at least if you, for the most part you had like a happy childhood just very recently it hit me that when i was a child uh, whenever i would get bored i would start doing very creative things i would start dancing and learning the the dances from the Backstreet Boys videos, I would start painting, playing Legos, I would start making clothes, putting collages together. I was just trying to entertain myself and being very creative. And as I stopped playing and I became a teenager and then an adult, I, I didn't play anymore. And so of course I wasn't doing very many creative things anymore. Instead what I did was like go to drugs and party. To feel better about myself once i had this realization i started replacing a lot of my partying with play and now i realize that i'm the happiest when i'm doing things that are creative because then i feel like like i'm talented even if it's something that's really small like a collage it just feels good to to me it feels really good to, to make something that didn't exist before as opposed to like just doing drugs or drinking alcohol and so I finally understood why even though I may have been going to parties all the time and soaking up each other's awesomeness all the time I still felt like I wasn't having fun because that's not the way that I am particularly feel good and feel like myself I feel like myself when I'm challenging my creativity and so for example instead of going to parties on Friday nights now that I go to yoga most of the time, I feel so good and I'm never questioning myself about am I the right party, am I with the right people because I am so happy that I know right because I, I feel so good that I know that I'm exactly where I need to be so even though I, when I walk out of that studio on a Friday night I see people that are partying and they're loud and they look like they're having so much fun I no longer feel that Oh, should I be having as much fun as them because I know that I am having my own kind of fun um, in a way that I couldn't before when I was going to parties and when I was technically one of them in short what I'm trying to say is that I found that I was already doing all the things that make me happy and that make me feel like myself I was doing them when I was a child when nobody told me this is what you should do or this is what people will look up to you for doing I just did them because they feel good to do to me 
and I don't know if that advice is gonna work for everybody but I do think that we should invite play into our lives whatever that means to you because to be in a state of play is to invite joy into your life and it's not an emotion that we can just feel all the time with all the constraints and all the obligations that we have in our lives if you think about how many things we have to do on other people's terms like what time we wake up because we have to go to work and we have to be traffic uh, and which all depend on whoever figured out that 9 to 5 are the best times to do business and to do whatever we need to do in our daily lives I mean most of us don't even get to choose what we do for work day to day or when we even take a vacation sometimes so much of our lives it's outside of our control that this constant you know doing things for others or in other people's terms chips away at you and the most beautiful parts of you and i think that's why so many of us feel powerless in our daily lives but it's actually only once you're full that you can turn away and give to others because if there's lack in you and you try to give to others that lack is going to contaminate everything that you do so that means it's not only necessary to figure out who you are and what makes you feel good for your own life but if you want to change the world and affect other people's lives it's that much more necessary that you find that happiness and that power from within you and not the things that are outside yourself and that can be taken away as we said earlier unfortunately so many of us learn to hide parts of ourselves as we grow up in order to function more efficiently in society and sometimes it's other people that shame us or one way or another push us into changing who we are but that's actually where your true power comes from from feeling like yourself from knowing who you are and always acting in accordance to what you actually value and you believe in if you had the pleasure of reading the outsiders you know exactly where i'm going with the title of this video but if you haven't let me explain it to you very quickly without giving any spoilers the outsiders follows a gang of outsiders of greasers in the 1950s they're not necessarily bad kids but they grow up in a neighborhood that's full of violence and crime so they have to adapt to thrive in that world one of the kids in the gang is called pony boy and he's different than the other kids he's different because he's very sensitive he's into art he likes to read poetry he's always thinking of other people like he picks up his cigarette butts he picks up broken his broken bottles so that people don't get a flat tire he's always doing things that single him out amongst all the other people towards the end of the book his very good friend johnny tells him stay gold pony boy to me that means to stay true to yourself even when the qualities that make you yourself are not on the surface benefiting you among the environment in which you're growing up they're what make you you and they're what make you beautiful to other people it's your responsibility to transcend the beliefs that society has transcend your own situation discover yourself and stay gold pony boy thank you for watching this video if you still are subscribe if you would like to continue talking about world domination i will make a new video when i have a new worthy enough topic for you to think about which is about once a month or a month and a half i've been averaging <laughs> so if you haven't seen my other videos you might want to catch up and thank you for everybody that's been leaving beautiful comments i've never been told that my voice was soothing so thank you <laughs> i've never gotten a compliment before um but i guess it feels good i mean it doesn't feel bad it's just i was surprised that a lot of people have been saying that um but thank you for letting me know and let me know any of your crazy genius ideas in the comments because i'm not a freaking dictator i don't want you to just first of all i don't want you to just subscribe to this channel i want you to actually implement whatever ideas this video is sparking you i want you to implement them in your life i don't want you to be sheep i think if you're watching this channel it's because you want to be a leader so if you have any brilliant or you know just any ideas just leave them in the comments and we'll be helping each other out as we go on to world domination thank you and i will see you next time <laughs>